nonviolence, came with the Freedom Rides. These were organized by the Congress of Racial Equality, whose members, both Negro and white, determined to challenge the practice of providing separate facilities for Negro and white travelers in the South. From all over the country, mixed groups traveling by bus entered the South. They entered segregated waiting rooms and restaurants in many Southern cities. In some, they were arrested, but they were determined to succeed even if it meant going to jail. Negroes were jailed for entering white waiting rooms. Whites were jailed for entering Negro waiting rooms. Over 300 Freedom Riders went to jail. Nearly half of those were white. Nearly half were women. Once again, the principles of nonviolence proved their effectiveness. For an evaluation of the Freedom Rides, we asked James Farmer, National Director of the Congress of Racial Equality. In American history, has anything been so successful as the Freedom Riders in the attack upon segregation? Before the Freedom Rides began, most of the bus terminals were segregated, especially in the Deep South. But as a result of the Freedom Rides, the Interstate Commerce Commission issued a ruling which went into effect on November 1st, ordering that all the segregation signs must come down in the terminals and that in their place must be posted desegregation signs. How is it that these events had not taken place earlier? We asked Roy Wilkins, Executive Secretary of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, well, of course, for many years, the Constitution and the Bill of Rights and the declarations therein were on the side of minorities and individual freedom, but the enforcement of the law was not. However, over the years, the Supreme Court has handed down a number of decisions in voting rights and matter of service on juries and housing and in education, uh, which have given the federal government the power to proceed. Now, these decisions were won uh, largely, but not exclusively, by NAACP attorneys. With uh, the legal framework now firmly in hand, the federal government is free to proceed and act uh, to enforce the rights of its citizens.